Um, we are the Broken Bones. Um, we perform an improvised comedy based off of your injury story. Usually we're performing it at Washington Improv Theater in Washington, DC, but right now we're performing it everywhere on your computers, on the internet. Um, so uh, because of uh, the internet being worldwide, oh, that was, that was a good line. Um, because the internet <laughs> being worldwide, we can have guests from all over the world to tell us stories about their injuries. So let's bring up our guest um, today, all the way from Los Angeles, it's Courtney! Yeah! Uh, Woohoo! Hi! Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Courtney, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, and I'm in my inauguration best clothing, so I got my, my little pearls, my little purple shirt. My lighting's not good, but I promise it's purple. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> inauguration day in dc um so we heard that you have a story for us um of a, a injury that you've had do you mind sharing it with us oh yeah so this happened about 10 years ago um back when it was a young early 20 something um and so i being fresh out of college not really having a job it was a recession I was trying to get creative with how to find a job. So I joined a slow pitch softball league that was like an entertainment slow pitch softball league. And I was doing this to be like, oh yeah, I'm gonna make friends, I'm gonna network, maybe get a really cool job at like FX. And then we were playing, my team was playing against like Spike TV. They're, they're in a real team because every TV network has their own softball league. And the first game, oh yeah, it's a big deal. And then you gotta go to the bars <laughs> afterwards. Um, and so uh, very much like the first game we played, it's a co-ed league. They go like, oh, you're actually really good for a girl. And so they had me like, so, for the, so I was like, I was like, oh yeah, I can do this. So they had me batting first in the order. They had me play, like pitching for them. So it was like, I was good in the slow pitch league. So very first inning and I just be like, okay, just make a good impression. Like maybe we can like network people at the bar then get a job and not be so unemployed and living in your parents' house. And so go up, get ready to hit. First pitch, swing the bat. I miss. I miss pretty badly. It's pretty embarrassing. Um, I then fall on the ground. And I'm like, oh, that's, that's really embarrassing. Oh my God, just, just get up, just laugh it off, tell a joke. <laughs> I can't get up. Um, so then I'm like, and then I was like, it hurts a lot. I'm like, wait, why can't I get up? And I look down at my leg that's not moving, and the kneecap of my leg went all the way behind my leg. Oh my oh. god, no! So <laughs> just to just to recap, I swung a baseball back, and now can no longer walk. Oh no! <laughs> so um, basically the catcher and everyone else in the field slowly started to realize like I was not getting up um so they come over and all the girls were being like it's okay you know like this is what happens like when you're like north of 21 like your knees eventually go out like we've all had <laughs> knee injuries and surgeries and so people try lifting me up we can't lift me up without getting me into more horrible pain so then we call 911 we get an ambulance and 30 minutes later of me just delaying the game of just being dead on home plate, an ambulance drives onto the field. Um, and the ambulance guys get a stretcher out and then like put me onto the stretcher and then whisk me away. And then my poor team actually had to forfeit the game because without me playing, they didn't have enough girls to legally play. Oh. And the manager, <laughs> the whole- what? The whole 30 minutes was going on, my manager just kept trying to negotiate and try to like f find another girl in the stands to fill in <laughs> because he knew this was gonna happen. Um, that said, uh, in the ambulance, they gave me morphine. I had never had morphine before. Um, I had like read about like opium and all that stuff, but I was not the big <laughs> drug druggy type. Um, and so very shortly after they gave me morphine, I start like feeling really good. I got very excited and started talking to the ambulance guys about the opium wars. Um, and <laughs> then I realized that I thought they were really excited to learn about the opium wars. So I just went into a lot of detail about like, well, you know, Felice Bieto, he was, 
he was a British photographer and he would actually rearrange the bodies to make it look like the, like the British were winning when they really lost a war and just go into like deep detail about it and that they had actually like went out of the way when they dropped me off at the hospital to recommend I maybe see a shrink as well because they were very concerned about my reaction oh. to, to the morphine and getting really into obscure history. Um, once I got to the hospital, um, they, the doctor was so impressed by how dislocated my kneecap was that it was like literally all the way behind my leg. He brought the rest of the Erox doctors in just to observe it. So everyone could just see that this was possible <laughs> to do and not tear. Like I was like a medical marvel. Um, they then had to give me more drugs because morphine wasn't enough and then giving me some kind of narcotic. So I was on like an upper and a downer. And then doing that, I was very much... I just started singing Elton John. I started singing Rocket Man at the top of my lungs. Um, and <laughs> every time my doctor talked to me, I would just break from singing, stare at him and like address him as a wizard. Um, they fixed my knee. Um, it was a very slow recovery that took about like actually like three years to fully recover from. Um, I did terrible in physical therapy. Uh, they did like I had the option of doing surgery where they would have taken like ligaments from my butt and like would have put it into my knee to like make me heal faster but that really scared me and I didn't want to have like butt ligaments in my <laughs> knee that just like mentally didn't get through um, but one of the one of the big perks of uh, having a, a knee that didn't work was I got handicapped parking to go to the bars um, so that was that was really exciting Great. So. That worked. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Cool. Wow. That's an epic story. Oh my gosh. How's your I'm, knee doing I'm, now? I'm shocked. It's um I can I can run now, I can ski now. There was like it took me it took me about three years just to be able to run again because there's no shock absorber in the knee, but it's it's fully functional now. Um but for the longest time it was my excuse to not go to the gym. And yeah. actually the girl who's at home plate in that game she ended up being my coworker later on. And when I was coming up with that excuse why I wasn't like going to the gym with her, I was like, <laughs> oh, I injured my knee. And then she was like, you're the knee girl from softball? I'm like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> you're famous, you're famous yeah. now. Wow, um, that was incredible. What, yeah. what, a, what a ride, what a story. Uh, yeah, great story. It's a great story. And we're glad that you're doing better now, Courtney. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you in a bit. And now uh, let's do uh, some improv based on that story. Thank you, Courtney. All right, um, C-SPAN uh, softball team. We're getting our drinks after the game. I just wanna, I just wanna do a nice cheers to getting to know you guys on a personal level outside of work. Um, and uh, I yield my time. <laughs> Well, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say, I, I wasn't sure about having an activity outside of work mm -hmm. with you, my coworkers. Uh, I did some research, of course. You need to get some sources just to double check that everything was gonna be fine. So, uh, yeah, I, I did some interviews to uh, some of your friends and and relatives just to double check everything. And uh, you know what? You are all good. You're all good people. I yield my time. <laughs> uh, I too had reservations um, getting together after our work day. Uh, now I give 30 seconds to the gentleman to my right. Me? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, you know, like I, I'm I, I, I'm, I'm an intern. I'm pretty new. I just want to say like, uh, thanks everybody. I'm learning so much. So like, uh, thanks. Cheers. <laughs> Uh, hold on. Cheers. Uh, yeah, cheer cheers, you know, like, uh, cheers. Cheers to meeting you all. What? Why would you just end your sentence like that? Uh, you just, didn't, uh, uh, you, well, you didn't... Is there something you, wrong? Yeah, why do you... Well, you didn't yield your, yield your time. I don't understand. Oh. Yeah, I, don't, I didn't realize we're being timed. I thought we were just at the bar. Like, 
I thought we were just at the bar, like having a good, t good, a good time. I didn't realize I was on the clock and have to. Okay, well, I guess I yield my time. I'm. I. Okay, I'm sorry. You just don't understand. I just want to make sure that everyone has equal time, and I don't know that um, you were done talking until you say that. So I just want to make you sure know, everyone has. You know, maybe you're more of a TLC mm. kind of intern. You know, mm. I mean. There's you a lot of strong. You looked like you would be a uh, good fit for this company, but you've ended up to be trashy and not worth my time. So what are you firing me? I, I just think, well, we, 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 we don't have, we cannot de 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 decide unless we, uh, we made a motion, uh, everyone, uh, you know, it, uh, in favor of firing, uh, the intern Neil say, aye. 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 uh, everyone in, fa in uh, against fire Neil say, I know. I abstain from I this not. poll. I I, okay, well, we got uh, two eyes, no I knows, one abstention. I'm sorry, Neil, you are uh, fired. Frank, uh, I don't, I mean, we'll get your None top. of you are really we'll my direct your... supervisor, so. And at the table next to them at the bar is uh, the TLC channel. TLC crew. So I was like, I was like, who, who cares how many cats and how long I've been hoarding newspapers and whether or not the K-1 visa came out okay for my fiance to come and live with me <laughs> and for us to get married in 90 days. And who cares if I'm a mom who has a pageant daughter who's grown into her teens and no longer can do pageants. And yeah, you know what? I'm gonna shut you up right there and just say, who cares if I'm a I'm a uh, teen mom or who cares if I'm a I'm a 16 and pregnant? You know what I'm saying? That's just what I'm trying to say. Is like, who cares if I'm even even a hoarder? I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, who yeah. cares? And one more thing is just like, I just want to let you know a uh, what. Go ahead. Go ahead. What? Me, right? I, and just like who cares uh, is all I'm trying to say. Who cares? Okay, I'm just. Oh, hold on. Let me just get this straight real quick. I thought that we. I, I'm just gonna be a little honest and vulnerable about our workplace right now. Like I thought that we were trying to tell the stories of the people, but it seems like we're just trying to tell both of your stories and your lives. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Listen. Listen. Who cares we, if pot pimples? Okay. Who cares? Wait, are you, I mean, we have, we have 27 shows. We have 27 shows in our network. And it seems that just the two of you are actually fitting in every single one of those 27 uh, TV shows. Okay. All right. Okay. I think I'm hearing your tone and I just want to say, who cares? And then and at the next group over is the true, true TV crew. And they all just stab each other immediately. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> All right. Well, nothing to see here. And see. <laughs> um. Hey, uh, Eric, could you just real quick toss me a paperclip? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, there you go. <gasps> oh! Oh! <laughs> whoa! Whoa! What? I was just trying to catch a paperclip. Oh my God! Is is your oh. finger feel like? Did I just break your finger just by tossing a paper clip? Eric. What? W T F. W T F. W T F. This is gonna be workman's comp. What's going on out here? Eric, are you causing problems? My office, one minute. Slam. Oh, Jesus. My God. Eric. I hate when he yells the slam. It's uh sorry, Christina, that wasn't I, I didn't mean to. I I I just throw you it was a paper clip. I never thought it just, was gonna break you your throw me another one, Eric? No, 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 I would I would never no, Jeff, put it down, Eric. I don't think I can catch that one. I only have Eric, two no. uh, Eric. What? Literally, she's the only girl in this workplace, and we're not gonna get our grant money if you keep breaking all of her fingers. Wait, dude, does that does that mean like now I, I guess like I need to go outside and try to find someone else that can fill out the position so that we can get our grant no or you could just stop breaking the poor girl's fingers we need okay. grant money okay yeah we do need the grant money i mean i'm sure there's a lot of other uh, extremely qualified female 
uh, people. So oh, okay. that wouldn't be an issue. Don't talk it, down. Okay, I'm not talking. Okay, I'm going to. I'm going to the. I'm going to the uh, our boss office. Okay. Okay. No, okay. Okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, should I call 911? Are you okay? Can you handle this? I don't know. Can Can, can you guys carry me? Can we just carry you? Yeah. No, we can't carry you. Here at the National Organization for Women, uh, we don't just simply carry you. We are here to influence policy and to make change oh. for women. Yeah, we, we, ele we, ele we elevate you. We You're elevate supposed you. to emotionally support me enough that I carry myself. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, we elevate you. All about. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. Okay. Fine. Okay. Uh, just go to the office, Eric. Just go go see the boss. Okay, okay, I'm gonna see the boss. Oh my god, oh my god. Eric, what the hell is going on out there? I'm I'm sorry, boss. Uh I just I just threw a um a paper clip and apparently uh it hurts uh Christina's finger. Uh what? but don't worry. A paper don't clip? Worry. Yes, a paper clip. Sounds ridiculous. All right, what have you been working on, though? Come on, we're under a bunch of tight deadlines. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, Christina is in charge of our section. Uh, she's been leading yeah. this uh, great uh, uh, just project. Is that, uh, a draft? is that a draft right there? Yeah, this is a, this is a draft. Can I, can I hand it to you over? Let me see it. Let me see it. Yeah. Oh! oh, my God, come ah! on. Ah! What? Did I just did I just break your wrist by throwing you two pieces of paper with a oh. paper clip on it? Ah! Oh. 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 Hey, what's going on? Eric. Here? <laughs> oh, geez, sorry, boss. Oh, what is going on in here, Eric? Boss, I'm boss of my boss. I'm so sorry. Apparently, I was. I just. I. Oh. Appar I it seems that I'm like extremely strong today. I don't know what's happening. I'm just throwing very small things like paper clips or two pieces of paper and I'm breaking people's fingers or oh. wrists. Oh. I'm so oh. sorry, I apologize. Eric, what's going on in here? I just had enough strength to army crawl from my cubicle to the office. Of course, and we... Oh, oh my God, thanks, the woman's here. Hey, Martinez. Yeah. I saw a little draft of the project you've been working on. Great job. Are you just saying that because I'm the only woman in the office? No. Uh, are we not supposed to do that? <laughs> are we not supposed to do that? You can't quit. Okay. Um, um, hey, uh, teachers, I call you today here because um, I just uh, something something insane happened at my in my math class. Um, you know, like that. Uh, you know that. A formula that I like to that I like to uh, write out on the board that is very hard, very complicated. Like the kids usually. Yeah, the uh, goodwill hunting formula. Yeah, the goodwill hunting formula. Like, it's just like a prank. It's just like, hey, yeah. One day you can get here. Well, mm -hmm. one kid actually did it, and I just told him to stay to stay in the classroom, and I immediately came here to tell you so that we can go and look at it. He it's like, hmm? provided a proof for a previously unsolved problem yes yes it's like one of your like, kids Mark, one of the kids at our school yeah one of the kids of our school and like i could have just like be like oh i can be in charge of this and i can help him out but like i decided like no no no. you know what i'm gonna call my other colleagues and talk about this because like i cannot do it on my own i need i need all of you to look at it and be like hey this is what's up it's just so rare it's just so rare that's crazy Wayne, That's can incredible. Go, can we go look at this kid? I've never yeah. seen this. Is like a, this is like they, a mystery. Oh my God. It's exactly go like a mystery. Tag, they go find the kid and he's just like basically passed out. And he's there for hours and hours. He's like groggy. And then he finally wakes up. And he's like, oh, what's going on? Do this on the board? You just do that on the board? Did you just do it on the board? Yeah, I did. I just can't really remember how i'm sorry I, I have this thing where like i'm a math genius on morphine but otherwise i'm an idiot you were you were singing rocket i mean i i saw you because i was your teacher and when you were doing it it was like you were singing rocket man yeah i was singing while i did a proof wait a it, second it, so you were on morphine and you were able to do this proof 
proof and then yeah yeah but i look at it now and can't make head or tails out of it then what the frick why wh why didn't i need morphine i went to i got my phd in mathematics and i couldn't have ever solved that problem maybe i should have freaking done morphine and not only not only that like when you were doing that you were talking about like very specifics about the great war and i'm like i don't think that's very relevant that you were just like oh did you know uh, Wait a second. So, Eric, you were here while the student was on morphine, and you were <laughs> listening to the student. Talk I about yeah, sing and also talk about wars and also solve a math problem. You were just I, watching me do it. I did. Man, I was okay. messed up. I didn't know. I didn't know that you were in more under morphine. That's that's very fucked up. Uh, I think we should take you to a doctor. But I just think this is insane that you've done this. Wait, wait, a, second, I, wait a second, kid. What other classes are you taking? Yeah. I mean, are you really that much of an idiot? Well, I'm taking and history and physics. Why are you doing it? Why, why are you why are you doing it like this? Why are you doing it like Those this? are just all the classes I'm taking. Okay, well what grade are you in? May ninth grade. Wow, a ninth grader. Wow. God, I have this throb throbbing pain though. Can you Take me to the doctor or something, or give me some drugs. I mean, I, I don't have anything on me, but I'm sure one of us can. You guys, you guys, hold on, hold on one sec. I just lost my mind for a second. We can't, we can't just give him drugs no. just because he wants it. We're literal teachers and we're employed yeah. in the school. Hold on a second. Think of all of the unsolvable mathematic what? equations out there. Also, we... also, he sings really well, Rocket. I mean, I, I'm not going to compare it. But like, if if I were a coach of the boys and I'm like not looking, and he, and I hear that person singing, I'm gonna be like, no freaking! I will turn my chair. I will one hundred percent turn my chair. Okay, That's hold on, Mr. Cunha, you just lost me. Why are the voice? You're comparing art, uh, the music of the voice to this guy. Are you saying that he is literally a composer of math? What are you saying here, man? Well. Just saying that he's also a great singer. When he was finishing uh, this, when he was singing Rocket Man, he was honestly like such a good, beautiful voice. So like he has very good qualities. I'm just saying like he has a lot of things to do. The potential in this ninth grader is it's insane. beyond it's us insane. It's insane. teachers. Oh. We have to tap into it. And let also, the yeah. Christina, did you just say we have to tap into it? Are you suggesting we all take morphine? I suggest that we call an ambulance to drive into this classroom right now and take this boy. There's the only way. What? Christina, did you just take morphine? Did you just say you want an ambulance to come into this classroom right now to drive? I don't think, we, I don't think we should be touching our students and carrying them out. That's all I'm saying. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Let's call 911. I mean, we can inspire them enough that they carry themselves, but I don't think we can inspire this child enough to get him uh, into the uh, hospital for morphine. His kid's not looking well. He's not, <laughs> He's not looking at well at all. At all. This is also, I, I, I think, I know I'm just throwing it out there, uh, calling it his parents would be, but maybe not, maybe it's just, maybe it's just us, maybe just us, the teachers man. have to fix the whole situation. Where, where are your parents right now? And we, we cut to the, the bar, to the TLC table. Well, I have a pitch. Okay, let's hear it. You, pitch, you guys right? always do your shows, but I, hey, I, I don't know if anyone would care about this, but I've got a kid who's a literal genius, and the only way I can fuel it is through a drug habit. So it's like, what if we did a show like Justifiable Drugs? Like, is that a good show? Like, would people watch that? I mean, for TLC standards, actually, I think people will watch it. Yeah, for TLC standards, that's. Yeah. That's not the craziest show I've heard. Are you serious? I just got my break. Uh, yeah. Is this bad? Is this bad? <laughs> we go to the C-SPAN table. What? What? And I yield my time. Uh, someone is screaming at us. What? What? Uh, motion to uh, uh, scream uh, back at them. Uh, everyone in favor, say A. A. I. A. I. Everyone uh, again, say uh, no. No, please.
What? Okay. Uh, three, three for both in favor. Oh, we can. Hey! We can hey! Hey! And there's a huge bar fight at the bar. All the different TV stations start pounding each other. Everybody gets so injured. They all go to the hospital. They all get heavy doses of morphine. And each channel comes up with the most brilliant, perfect shows for their channel. C-SPAN can show politicians doing their, doing their routine stuff all day long, every day. And TLC comes up with the, the perfect show. And True TV comes up with their own perfect crime-based show. And boy, TV sure is cool, huh? Also drugs. <laughs> and that's our show. That's our show. And that's our show. Let's bring back Courtney. <laughs> Yay, Courtney. Yeah, loved it. It's great. <laughs> Thanks, um, Courtney. Thank you so much, Courtney, for telling us a story so that we could do this show. Um, would you like to plug anything coming up or social media or anything to put on? We can link in our YouTube, our YouTube video. Yeah, uh, my improv team is starting our own uh, show on Saturdays. We're called Let Craig Be. I don't know how to link to it, but I'll figure it out. Just Google Let Craig Be on YouTube and maybe that will work. Um, you can find me on Instagram at Comrade pepper um i thought i was clever when i came up with that because i thought the communist sergeant pepper was clever and i don't know how to change it <laughs> um and i'm not on twitter because i don't trust myself with words i don't think i'm a very good wordsmith but uh yeah that's that's where you can find me so yeah okay Great. awesome thank you so much courtney thank you everyone for watching uh we'll see you next time have a great night